In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this geometric background in Cavalry. In this design, the heart and soul of it is the quad tree. So let's hit control period and create ourselves a quad tree. First, we're just going to rename it distribution. And now, however this quad tree looks is how your entire design is going to look at the end. So it's really important to start getting these settings correct from the beginning. So first, we're going to keep the source distribution at random and keep the shape at rectangle. My composition is set to 1920 by 1080 and a good size that I found for that is 2150. And if you hold alt and then hit enter, it will add that value to both inputs at the same time. Next, we're going to increase the count to 125 and the seed will adjust later. We do want to use probability. We'll set that to 0.5. The threshold will keep the same at 0.5 and 1. And then this size down here should match the same size up here. So we're going to put 2150 here, Alt Enter. And this is our base quad tree distribution. So what we can do is we can zoom out. And the reason that this is so much bigger than the composition itself is because if you try to do a widescreen ratio with the quad tree, you'll see here that each individual cell starts to get smushed and it doesn't look very good. So I've just found keeping it square is the best. Now what I like to do is to readjust the quad tree so that it's close to one edge and this way that most of the cells will be within the composition. Next we can play around with the seed to try to find an interesting composition. I like finding ones that have at least one big square. Uh, I don't like having more than that, but it's sort of a personal preference thing. But just keep in mind that this layout will be what your final thing looks like in the end. Okay, so with that set, let's pick some colors. Now I have a color palette that I already like to use, but if you don't have one and you struggle to find good colors for your work, a great resource for that is coolers.co. On coolers.co, you can either use the generator to kind of make your own palette, or what I like to do is explore the trending palettes. So this is a page where other people make palettes and then they upload it, and it's a great source of inspiration for colors. So as you're looking on here, just kind of find some colors that you like. And for this project, it's good to have some contrast in your colors, some dark colors, some light colors, things like that. For this project, we're gonna have two color arrays. One of these arrays, we are going to call the base color array. And this is gonna hold your darker colors and will be used for the background of the piece. This one we will call the shape color array, and it will be used for all the shape colors. For my particular design, I'm going to have three colors in each array, but for yours, you can have as many as you want. This is something that you can play around with at the end stage to tweak your design and make it make it look exactly how you want it to look. When you have a color array and you push it through a duplicator, the default behavior is that it will use the colors in order per index. So in this case, it would go 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And sometimes that can start to look a little repetitive. So what we want to do here is in our index, we're going to go to add behavior and add a random node. Now, when you're using a random node on a color array, you need to make sure that the minimum and maximum are the correct range. So it defaults to zero and 10. But what that would do is any number above two would just pick the same color, which means that this color would be picked way more often than the others. So for both of these arrays, I want to have mine set to zero and two. The other thing that's important to do here is to name them. So this one, I'm just going to call shapes color seed. And then this one we will call base color seed. And what I want to do is take the seed value here, right click and add to control center. So what that does is it puts these attributes up here. And so then later on, we can mess around with them to change our design without having to root through a bunch of different folders and sub shapes and stuff. Next, we got to make some shapes. These are the shapes that I use in my design. And as you can see, a lot of them are just the basic primitive shapes. None of these individual shapes themselves have to be very fancy. So next, what we have to do is just make sure that all of our shape colors are connected to the shape color array. The next thing we want to do is to create an element for the background color. And that's as simple as just creating a rectangle shape and connecting our base color array into it. Now, if we take a look at the example again, you'll see here that there are these extra color blocks on top of everything. So what that is, is it's just a rectangle shape with the shapes color array piped into it. That goes into a duplicator set to a two by two grid. And then what I did is on the shape opacity, I created a value array. And this is just two values, zero and 100. And then in that array index, I created a noise node. 
So every frame, each of these squares will pick a different opacity. And in the final design, we will change the overall opacity and the blending mode of it as well. So with all of our base elements together, it's time to start making some duplicators. I am going to turn back on the quad tree distribution so that we can start to see the grid being filled up. So let's go ahead and add a duplicator to our scene with control period. This duplicator we will call the base color duplicator. The distribution type will be sub mesh, and then we're going to put our quad tree into the shape. All the other default values, we can keep the same for this one. So for the input shapes, what we want to do is just put in our base color. So now we can see the background colors being filled in. And this is where putting the seeds into the control center is handy. If we don't like how these colors are being distributed, we can just go to our base color seed and just kind of scrub around until we find something that we do like. For now, I'll leave it here and I'll probably tweak it again later. The next duplicator, we can actually just copy and paste from this one. So I'm just going to hit control D on this duplicator, rename it, and now we can start. So let's get rid of our base colors. And then as we start putting these in here, you'll start to see things fill out. Now, at first, I'm just going to put one of each shape into here and we start to see our distribution. However, this is a completely even distribution. Each shape will be in there the same amount of times. And we may not always want that. So what you can do is if there's a shape that you like more, such as leaf, if you just keep adding those in, then now leaf will be added in more times than the other ones. So I'm just going to pick a couple of these, put in some more shapes. And now the other thing that you can do as well is if you click on this little yellow tab here, you can see all the shapes that we have input. And just by moving these around, you can start to see them change where they are there. So for instance, if I don't want this diamond to be in the big space, I can shuffle these around until the diamond is somewhere else. The other thing that we want to do with this duplicator is that all of our shapes are kind of exactly the same every time. And that gets a bit repetitive, especially here where you see three of the leaf shapes in a row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to shape rotation, right click and do add array and add a value array to this. In this value array, we're going to have four variables and they're going to be set to 0, 90, 180, and 270. And so you can see that some of the things started to change a little bit, but what we need to do is put a random node on this index. So we're going to uncheck auto index and then in the array index, we will right click, add a behavior and go to random. And again, we need to pop into the random and say it's between zero and four because we have four values. We can mess around with this seed as well. So first I'm going to rename this to be rotation seed. And then I'm going to right click and add it to the control center. So now we can keep playing around with this to change our rotations later. And the final duplicator that we want, we can just duplicate the base one again, make sure that we have the correct one selected, move that to the top. This one will be called upper shapes duplicator. We'll remove the base shapes and pull in the squares folder. We want to pull in the whole folder so that everything gets pulled along correctly. Now you can see that this is kind of a huge mess, but what we're going to do is we're going to set the blend mode to overlay. So that starts to make cool color variations within the shapes themselves. So now what we can do to try to finalize our design is we can scrub through the timeline frames because the overlay pattern is set to a noise node, which changes based on frame. And then we can also play around with the seeds. So our base color seed, we can find something a little bit better, our shapes color seed, and finally the rotational seed. So this is just the basics of setting this up. It's really up to you at this point to either add new shapes, add more colors, play around with the quad tree design, all of those different things, just make it your own. If you learned something, go ahead and like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.